Hello all YouTubers, I am Dweller Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you RT to back into this Invest 95L discussion for August 10th, 2020. Before I get on with today's video, however, it would be really awesome if you guys did hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much, by the way, for 900 subscribers. We are almost there. We're less than 100 away from the big ultimate goal of 1,000 subscribers. So please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, as well as ring the bell notification so you don't miss my next upload. Also, watching the whole video because getting to the goal of 1,000 subscribers and monetization, we're getting very close. And you guys watching the whole video will help the weather dude's channel out a lot. So please consider watching the whole video as well. Please do. And also like and share this video with your friends. Thank you. Now let's get on with today's video. So today we're going to be talking about Invest 95L out in the tropical Atlantic, um, off the coast of Africa here. This is west of the Cabo Verde Islands. As you can see, it has a 60% chance to develop in the next five days and in the next two days. All right, so we're going to kind of read the NHC description here. So again, it's a broad area of low pressure. Um, as you'll be able to see on the satellite loop imagery that I'll be showing you next. All right, this hasn't shown any signs of additional organization, although Yesterday, during the day yesterday, it was showing signs of organization. It's not quite doing so today. So it's 700 miles west-southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands. And this could be a threat to the uh, extreme northern windward islands, maybe even Puerto Rico, and maybe even the Bahamas down the road, depending on the exact track. So we'll be going over that in this video as well. So again, satellite-derived wind data from this morning still showing it does have an elongated surface circulation, so not quite a surface slow. It's trying to develop. But we, we do expect some conditions that are, you know, somewhat 50-50, so somewhat conducive here for development to occur. And we could have a tropical depression or even a storm forming in the next couple of days as this moves at a pretty average pace for a tropical cyclone, 10 to 15 miles per hour uh, forward speed across the tropical Atlantic. But by the end of the week, conditions won't be so conducive. Maybe this will weaken. But usually they say that. Like, us like usually at National Hurricane Center, it's like it's kind of, you know, it's not, it's not really going to develop at the end of the week. Like, it's going to start falling apart. Sometimes that happens, and sometimes the storm gets even stronger. All right, so we're going to continue to get updates on this. This could weaken late this week, but it does have the chance to strengthen over the next few days. So, again, a 60% chance to develop by the National Hurricane Center, or according to the National Hurricane Center. As you can see, in the first couple of frames of the satellite imagery, in the very first couple of frames, you can see, like, a little circulation. Uh, and in the recent satellite image frames, you really can't see it anymore. It's kind of tucked behind some very light convection. Um, all, it's kind of tucked away by those cirrus clouds. It's not. It doesn't look too organized. Oh no, we do have some decent convection on the north side and on the southwest side, but it's not very organized. That's not. This is not what a tropical cyclone or a pre-tropical cyclone, if you want to call it. It's not really what it should look like. It's got a circulation, but now it's kind of tucked away behind that convection. At least before, it. I mean, in the first couple of frames, it looked like it was kind of separated, um, and it looked like you could at least see it better. Now, not so much. All right, so according to the National Hurricane Center, about maybe about an hour and a half ago, two hours ago in this update, they had it about 35, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll say about 35 because that's probably where it is by now because it is moving a little bit. All right, so about 35 degrees uh, west or so and about just under 10 degrees north. So looking at it, it looks like it could be in this general vicinity. So it is sitting in some warmer than average waters, which is good for development, okay? Because if it's in cooler average waters, and obviously, we don't have as much energy going into the tropical cyclone. And looking at the water temperatures, it has recently entered some water temperatures of 28 degrees Celsius, which is well into the low 80s, almost mid 80s. That's about 82, 83. Um, that's definitely uh, good for development. As it continues west, though, towards the Caribbean, maybe it goes up to 29. And if it can make it beyond that towards the Bahamas, maybe even 30 degrees Celsius, which is into the mid to up, even upper 80s. All right. So looking at where the low pressure stands right now, we just got a latest 18Z picture here, all right? And as you can see, again, the exact low coordinates as obviously as it's moving west here. So the actual low is actually at 34 degrees west, excuse me, and about 10 and a half degrees north. So looking at the model tracks here, all right, I just set this up, but I'd like to refresh just in case, because look, we just got a new model uh, come in on this. All right, I just like to refresh it, even though I just got done setting this up. Um, as you can see, the models do agree, but at about in the first 72 hours, then they kind of start disagreeing. A couple models take it this way. Now, if, now keep in mind, we do see this happen a lot with tropical cyclones this time of year. If the storm stays further south, it will be tracking through the Caribbean, making a headlandfall on the central and southern windward islands. However, 
if it stays on a more north track and we have like a weaker high pressure system to the north, this could make a northward turn and then bend out to sea and maybe only affect Bermuda or maybe affect no one at all. So it all depends on that track. Does it go a little bit more north? Because if it does, that would have a better chance of it turning out to sea or if it stays south, it could maybe head towards the Caribbean and the Caribbean islands. Uh, something definitely to watch. It's the number one thing to watch out for this time of year with these tropical waves and tropical storms that come off the coast of Africa. So look at this set of GEFS model tracks. Okay, getting a little refresher just in case. Um, you can see they do show a little bit of strengthening over the next couple days, next few days. They do show a little bit of strengthening, but it's not, I would say it's barely significant enough for a tropical storm. Um, and GEFS is a set of models, like most of the model tracks do keep this farther to the north, meaning that it will most likely, once it gets to about Bermuda, it may go out to sea. All right, or if it tries to keep tracking towards the United States, like towards the Mid-Atlantic or the Northeast, maybe a cold front or some kind of frontal system will come through and maybe take it out to sea. Usually when storms get this far north in latitude, like once it gets past, say, about 20 to 25, especially once it passes 25, um, that can really help make it turn out to sea, depending on the uh, 500 millibar steering heights uh, as well. So we just, got a, we just got our 12Z runs for the GEPS model tracks, okay? It's amazing how, what, you know, what can update in just a few minutes. Uh, GEPS is all over the place. Even though the black line kind of gives us some of what all these models are saying, one like a couple of models take it all the way out, you know, to the, to the east here, like all the way out to about 40 degrees um, west longitude, and some models take it all the way back to 70 and beyond that, 70 degrees west longitude. So some models take it out towards the Bahamas. I mean, some models have it going towards Bermuda, and some models have it going out west of these, uh, like kind of like in between Canada and the Azores here, so. All right, that's something we're gonna have to watch out for, but Bermuda could be affected by this. There are a decent cluster of models that have been going somewhat close to Bermuda, so maybe some wave impacts at the least for Bermuda, we'll have to watch, because uh, those impacts could certainly grow. Um, look at the model intensity guidance. Um, most models do make it a tropical storm or a strong tropical depression further on down the road um, over the next, you know, five, seven days, and even one model um, does make it a category one and probably if you were to extend it maybe category two all right that could be an outlier we never know so look at our ship's diagnostic message here all right so let's kind of zoom in so you guys can see us a little better all right that's better right there so as you can see the shear looks a little stronger now but it looks like the wind shear will be weakening very much so actually as we head over the next say 60 even you know 84 hours now Looking at the ocean water temperatures, like I said earlier, they will go up to 28, but then if it makes a northward turn, maybe 27, then back up to 20, close to 29 again. So ocean water definitely, I mean, whether it's 27 and a half, 28 and a half, that's still very uh, conducive for development, as long as it's well above 80, which it is. Um, as long as there's not a lot of heat content, which we'll get to uh, very shortly, that would definitely help it develop, especially if you've got a lot of heat energy in an atmosphere. So looking at the storm speed here, it's going to maintain storm speed, maybe pick up a little bit, maybe going from about, you know, 10 to 15 miles an hour, maybe we could get above 20 miles an hour over the next five days. Like I said, this is just one run of the ship's diagnostic message. Can, this can definitely change. And it says about invest 95L. But this does have the possibility to become Tropical Storm Josephine. And look at the heat content. That only looks to go up, you know, over time. Like over 60 hours, our heat content is 34. And I believe this value is taken out of 100. So 34 out of 100, even climbs to 47, 43 here over the next few days, maybe close to the next five days, all right? So maybe we can have some building heat content, and that can really help the storm uh, grow and start to rotate. Now, I should be able to see the GFS and the uh, GEM model. We'll also be showing the European model. But if you were to look at this on the MSLP and the precipitation, you wouldn't think there's much of this storm. But if I show you guys on the cyclonic vorticic signature, which I will be, you'll definitely see that the storm looks a lot uh, better on the cyclonic vorticity signature, which is why I like to show that better. All right, because I think the cyclonic vorticity signature does a better job uh, depicting the storm strength and like how it's organized. So look at the MSLP here. You can see that may not be much left to this going to the GFS model. But what's funny is that the ship's diagnostic message, if you guys didn't know, ship's diagnostic message, that's a tongue twister. This is actually a GFS version of it, okay, because they only give like a GFS version. So there it is right there. So if you go to hurricanes.rail.ucar.edu, as you can see right there, uh, that's where we'll be able to get these ship diagnostic messages that I use very often. Um, and that was actually the GFS model uh, run of it. So his, this is the GFS model as well. All right. So look at the GFS model. Uh, during the time it's starting to weaken, I actually want to see if we can get a model sounding on this. 
So let me pull up the model site. I don't use these very often, but I figure I'd give them a try and use them for these video for this video here. Um, as you can see, look at the P watt here, 2.26 inches. Okay, and I believe what really what time is this? This is 12. This is the 12Z model run. All right, this is valid for 2 a.m. on August 12th. Um, the P watt. This is almost similar to what we had with Hurricane Isaias, the impact in the Mid Atlantic. So some a lot of heavy rainfall associated with this storm system. All right, wind shear looks very, very minimal here. We're talking about nine knots of wind shear. So that's not bad, all right? But we don't have too much um, thunderstorm activity, as you can see by the surface base cape. It's only about 968 joules per kilogram. When you're dealing with severe weather, usually it's like, you know, over a couple thousand. So that, that's when we get those big thunderstorms, but still a lot of heavy rainfall associated with the storm system. Now the GFS seems to think this will weaken over time, so let's actually take a look at about 2 p.m. on August 13th, and let's see if this storm is battling any more wind shear. So we're going to pull up our model sounding again. Again, it says 2 p.m. on August 13th. As you can see, PWAT has remained the same. Maybe dropped a little bit. Surface base cape has gone up, actually. So 1,500 joules per kilogram, which means maybe building some taller thunderstorms. And our wind shear is 8 knots. So the wind shear actually did drop a little bit. Pretty much stayed the same. All right. So if the wind shear stays low like this, this storm can actually develop. But maybe once you get it too far on time, maybe the GFS doesn't want to scare anybody, so they kind of weaken the storm a little bit. But when I show you guys on a cyclonic vorticity signature, you'll be able to see it a lot better. Then maybe it could potentially skim the islands. All right, now let's take a look at one more model sounding run before we move on to our next map. So, all right, this is 2 p.m. on August 15th, so let's pull up our next model sounding. All right, so let's wait for this to load here. And as you can see, our p watt has remained the same, but notice the wind shear now. Getting a little hazardous. All right, uh, 22 knots. Our p watt has started to drop a little bit. But our, our surface base cable has gone up to 2,500 joules per kilogram, which is pretty impressive, even in a severe weather situation. All right, and notice that the dew points in the atmosphere that this is in is 76. So some very, very high dew points as well. So maybe some building thunderstorm activity. Who knows? So look at the cyclonic vorticity signature. Now this, this, like when I share the European model, you'll be able to see like the regular version. This is still a cyclonic vorticity signature, but I like this map because it combines three and one, so to speak. So in these colors, like your green, your yellow, and your red, and your purple, that's your cyclonic vorticity signature, right? Just like you would normally see. Um, you have your 200 millibar winds indicated by the little sticks here that you see on your map. And then you have, I think, what's your 500 millibar steering indicated by these solid lines here. So that's why I like using these maps. It's combining three maps that I use into one. So that's why I like using this. So we're going to look at the GFS and the GEM model. Sadly, European doesn't provide a, a map of this. But look at the GFS model here. Notice it's still, the energy still looks circular. It looks rotating. we got a little band coming in towards uh, the northern Windward Islands here over the, through the day Friday and through Saturday afternoon. As you can see, this the southern edge of the storm does kind of scrape. The bottom does kind of scrape the northern islands here maybe even puerto rico then it actually drops south a little bit here's what's left of it heading uh just north if not right into puerto rico so we'll be watching for that as well so looking at the gem model uh sadly gfs model um the gem model unlike the gfs does not do model soundings which is what i like about the gfs model but on the gem model as you can see the storm doesn't look too doesn't look too organized and you might be thinking where is it all right, whatever's left of it is right here. You got your barely like you've still got a little low center. But like I said, once you see the cyclonic vorticity signature, you'll be able to see it a lot better. And you'll be able to see that it's not as weak as you might think it is. All right. So then it, but the gem model does have a weakening um, and impacting the islands a lot less than the GFS had it. All right. So looking at it right now, I mean, looking at it at 2 p.m., you can see there's a lot of energy. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of energy with this, but it's a little bit elongated. Uh, it's not quite organized enough. Once you can take advantage of that, like look at this. All right, let's look at Thursday morning. All right, we st I mean, we, st we got some decent looking energy out there. And if we look at, let's take a look at the surface winds. Kind of get a look at the surface winds. So, I mean, not bad. Not quite tropical storm force, but it could be. All right. There could be some patches of storm. Like if the aircraft reconnaissance starts, the hurricane hunters start flying in there. They can maybe get a better look on this. All right, but then the storm, it does have a actually a little bit stronger of a storm. Starting to see some outflow boundaries coming out of this thing, which is pretty impressive looking. But it also looks like the majority of it will stay north of the islands. Maybe little bands could come into Puerto Rico and the northern Windward Islands. But other than that, it looks pretty calm for the islands. And then it kind of moves forward. And then beyond that, 
We have a very vigorous tropical wave coming off of Africa, but there is a storm nearing the Bahama Islands. Now, this is really far out. Okay, this is, I'm lost track here. This is about 8 p.m. on Wednesday, August 19th. So let me pull up the European model for you guys. Now, much like the NHC, the National Hurricane Center was saying, the European model, watch this, has it developing a decent amount, right? Here's Tuesday morning, 8 o'clock, got some reds, all right, in the center. So we got some decent cyclonic vorticity signatures on the map. Um, it doesn't maintain that strength through Wednesday morning. Now, this skips every day. So we're going one day in advance each time. But then, by the time we head towards later in the week, like the National Hurricane Center was saying, here's Thursday at 8 o'clock in the morning. It looks like it's starting to lose a little bit of its strength. But it still looks evident that a storm is there. And by five days out, this is by Saturday morning, you can barely even see it. Kind of have to follow it with your eyes. And then it does actually scrape the northern windward islands, but, you know, who like, who knows what's even left of this at this point. If we look at the winds at 500 feet, all right, you can, the 500 feet level winds may not even be that strong. So, but it could get strengthened. It could strengthen early, all right? So maybe more of a tropical storm or a strong tropical depression early. And maybe developing later so we'll be watching this thing okay it's august okay so the conditions are getting conducive this time of year and things can change like like just like that okay so we never know um so thank you guys for watching today's video all right stay tuned for updates ring the bell notifications and subscribe if you haven't already and be sure to drop a like on this video as well thank you guys so much for watching i am the dude signing off until next time catch you guys next video